Chapter 14 of Jetta of the Lowlands by Ray Cummings. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Jetta takes a hand. I came from my reverie to find the beer before me. He was standing with legs planted wide, arms folded across his deep chest, and on his face an ironic smile. So tired, my little captives, dee me. You look like babes lost in a wood. I disengaged myself from Jetta, resting her against a cushion, and she did not awaken. I stood up, fronting the beer. What are you going to do with me? I demanded. He held his ironic smile. Take you to my camp. You will be well hidden. No one can follow me. My ex-flyer is a very handy thing to have, isn't it? So you're the smuggler I was sent after. That really amused him. Er, uh, yes. Those tricksters, Perona and Spawn, we were what you would call partners. He had, the perfumed Perona, what he thought was a clever scheme for us. I was to take all the risk, and he and Spawn got most of the money. Cha! They thought I was an imbecile. Pretending to attack a treasure, and being such a fool that I would not seize it for myself. Not De Beer, he chuckled. Well, so very little did they know me. No treasure yet touched De Beer's fingers without lingering. He was in a talkative mood and drew up his chair and slouched in it. I saw that he had been drinking some alcohol-like beverage. Not enough to befuddle him, but enough to take the keen edge off his wits and make him want to talk. Sit down, Grant. I'll stand. As you like. What are you going to do with me, I demanded again. Try to ransom me for a fat price from the United States? He smiled sourly. You need not be sarcastic, young lad. The better for you if I get a ransom. Then I hope you get it. Perona's idea, he added. I will admit it looked possible. I did not know, then that you had government protection. He went grim. That was Perona and Spawn's trickery. Well, they paid for it. No one plays the beer false and lives to tell it. Perona and Spawn wanted to get rid of you because you annoyed them. Did I? With little Jetta, I fancy. His gaze went to the sleeping Jetta and back to me. Perona was very sensitive where this little woman was concerned. Why not? An oldish fool like him. I could agree with that, but I did not say so. I said, You'd better cast me loose, Jetta and me. I suppose you realize, De Beer, that you'll have the patrols like a pack of hounds after you. Jetta is a Narita citizen. The United States will take that up. There's the theft of the treasure, and as you say, I'm a government agent. He nodded. Your government is overzealous in protecting its agents, that I know, Grant. I might have left you alone there in the garden when I realized it, but that, by damn, was too late. Live men talk. Anyway, if I cannot ransom you, to kill you is very easy, and dead men are shut mouth. I'm still alive, De Beer. He eyed me. You talk brave. This condescending, amused giant. I retorted, How are you going to ransom me? That, he said, I have not yet planned it. A delicate business. I ventured, and Jetta, my heart was beating fast. Jetta, he said with a sudden snap, is none of your business. Again his gaze went toward her. I might marry her, why not? I am not wholly a villain. I could marry her legally in Cape Town, with all the trappings of clergy, and be immune from capture under the laws there. If she is seventeen, I have forgotten her age. It's been so long since I knew her. Is she seventeen? She does not look it. I said shortly, I don't know how old she is. But we can ask her when she awakens, can't we? He was amusing himself with me, and yet, Looking back on it now, I believe he was more than half serious. From his pouch he drew a small cylinder. Have a drink, Grant. After all, I bear you no ill will. 
A man can but follow his trade. You were trying to be a good government agent. Thanks. And then you make it possible for me to pick a nice ransom. Here. I hope so. I declined the drink. Afraid for your wits? I said impulsively, I want all my wits to make sure you handle this ransom properly to beer. I am as interested as you are. In that, at least, we are together. He grinned, tipped the cylinder at his lips for a long drink. Quite so. A mutual interest. Let us be friends over it. His gaze wandered back to Jetta. he added slowly. She is very lovely, Grant. A little woodland flower, just ready for plucking. A sentimental tone, but there was in his expression a ribald flippancy that sent a shudder through me. She has quite overcome you, Grant. Well, why not me as well? I am certainly more of a man than you. We must admit that Perona had a good eye. My thoughts were wandering. Suppose I could not find an opportunity to escape with Jetta. De Beer might successfully ransom me and take her to Cape Town, or if he feared that, to try for the ransom would be too dangerous, doubtless he would kill me out of hand. An ill outcome, indeed. Nor could I forget that there was a half a million of treasure involved. It was obvious to me that Hanley would not permit the patrol ships to attack De Beer with the lives of Jed and myself at stake. Hanley knew, or suspected, that De Beer was operating an invisible flyer, but I did not see how that could help Hanley much. Marks, acting for Narita, would doubtless be willing to ransom Jetta. The United States would ransom me. I must urge the ransom plan, because for all the money in the world, I would not endanger Jetta, nor let this bandit carry her off. Or could I escape with her and still find some means to save the treasure? It was Jetta's treasure now, two-thirds of it, for it had legally belonged to her father. Could I save it? And her as well? Not by any move of mine, here now on this flyer, that was impossible. In De Beer's camp, perhaps, but that too I doubt it. He was too clever a scoundrel to be lax in guarding me. But in the effecting of a ransom, the exchange of me and perhaps Jetta for a sum of money, that would be a delicate transaction, and some little thing could easily go wrong for De Beer. There would be my chance. I would have to make something go wrong, get in his confidence now, so that I would have some say in arranging the details of the ransom. Make him think I was only concerned for my own safety, appear clever in helping plan the exchange, and then so manipulate the thing that I could escape with Jetta and save the treasure, and the ransom money as well, and capture the beer since that was what Hanley had sent me out to accomplish. Thoughts fly swiftly. All this flashed to me. I had no details as yet, but that I must get into De Beer's confidence stood but clearly. I said abruptly, De Beer, since we are to be friends, so you prefer to sit down now? Yes. I had drawn a small settle to face him. De Beer, do you intend to ask a ransom for Jetta? You insist with that question. That is my way. Then we can understand each other. Do you? No, he said shortly. I frowned. I think I could get you a big price. I think I should prefer little Jetta, Grant. I held myself outwardly unmoved. I don't blame you. But you will ransom me. It can be worked out. I have some ideas. Yes, he agreed. It can be worked, perhaps. I have not thought of details yet. You are much concerned for your safety, Grant. Fear not. An amused thought evidently struck him, he added. It occurs to me how easy, if I am going to ransom you, it will be for me to send you back dead. You might, if I send you back alive, tell them a lot of things about me. I will not talk. Not, he said if I close your mouth for good. I had no retort. There was no answering such logic. 
and with his murders of Spawn and Perona, and the deaths of some of the police guards at the mine, the murder of me would not put him in much worse a position. He was laughing ironically. Suddenly he checked himself. Well, Jetta, so you have awakened. Jetta was sitting erect. How long had she been awake? What had she heard? I could not say. Her gaze went from De Beer to me and back again. Yes, I am awake. It seemed that the look she flashed me carried a warning. But whatever it was, I had no chance of pondering it, for it was driven from my mind by surprise at her next words. Awake, yes, and interested, hearing this Grant bargain with you for his life. It surprised the beer as well, but the alcohol light had dulled his wits, and Jetta realized this and presumed upon it. Oh, exclaimed the beer, our little bird is angry. Not angry, it's contempt. Her look to me now held contempt. It froze me with startled chagrin, but only for an instant, and then the truth swept me. Strange Jetta. I thought of her only as a child, almost, but not quite a woman, a frightened little woodland fawn. Contempt to beer. Is he not a contemptuous fellow, this American? Again I caught her look and understood it. This was a different Jetta, no longer helplessly frightened, but a woman fighting. She had heard the beer calmly saying that he might send me back dead, and she was fighting now for me. De Beer took another drink and stared at her. What is this? She turned away. Nothing. But if you are going to ransom me... I am not, little bird. She showed no aversion for him, and it went to his head, stronger than the drink. Never would I ransom you. He reached for her, but nimbly she avoided him, acting, but clever enough not to overdo it. I held myself silent. I had caught again the flash of a warning gaze from her. She had fathomed my purpose. Get his confidence, beguile him. And woman is so much cleverer than the trickiest man at beguiling. Do not touch me, De Beer. He tried that. He held my hand in the moonlight to woo me with his clever words. Ah, Grant, you hear her? And I find him now not a man, but a craven. But you will find me a man, Jetta. De Beer was hugely amused. See, Grant, we are rivals. You and Perona, then you and me. It is well for you that I fear you not, or I would run my knife through you now. I could not mistake Jetta's shudder, but De Beer did not see it for she covered it by impulsively putting her hand upon his arm. Did you, did you kill my father? She stumbled over the question, but she asked it with a childlike innocence sufficiently real to convince him. I, why? He recovered from his surprise. Why no, little bird? Who told you that I did? No one. I, no one has said anything about it, she added slowly. I hoped that it was not you, De Beer. Me? Oh, no. It was an accident. He shot me a menacing glance. I will explain it all, Jetta. Your father and I were friends for years. Yes, I know. Often he spoke to me of you. Many times I asked him to let me meet you. They were ignoring me, but Gutierrez, lurking in the door oval, was not. I was well aware of that. I remember you from years ago, little Jetta and I remember you. I understand the rationality of her purpose. She could easily get De Beer's confidence. She had known him when a child. Her father had been his business partner, presumably his friend. And I saw her now cleverly altering her status here. She had been a captive, allied with me. She was changing that. She was now Spawn's daughter, here, with her dead father's friend but she turned a gaze of calm aversion upon me. Unless you want him here, De Beer, I would rather talk to you without him. He leaped to his feet. Ah, that pleases me, little Jetta. Gutierrez, take this fellow away. The Spanish-American came slouching forward. The girl's an old friend, Commander. 
You never told me that. Because it is no business of yours. Take him away. Seal him in D. Cubby. I said sullenly, I misjudged both of you. Jetta's gaze avoided me. As Gutierrez shoved me roughly down the corridor, De Beer laughed, and his voice came back. Do not be afraid. We will find some safe way of ransoming you, dead or alive. I was flung on a bunk in one of the corridor cubbies, and the door sealed upon me. End of chapter 14